Nothing hits harder than a stab in the back by someone we trust the most. What happens when your best friend betrays you? Jonathan Broyhill was even this couple's best man at their wedding. But it all ended terribly at dinner, where Broyhill's betrayal was the main dish served. A rising young political strategist stabbed to death in her home, allegedly killed by a close friend who was her husband's best man in their wedding. And those three were so close, they had dinner together every week. Now that family friend is facing first-degree murder charges, and prosecutors say it may have been about money. Case of politics and alleged betrayal and murder. Crime story and a shocking death of a political strategist in North Carolina, a prominent family caught up in a murder mystery and police are now scrambling for a motive. A suspect who was the best man in a couple's wedding now accused of murdering. The person's still in the house and we need the police. Okay, what's the name? John Boyhill. John Boyhill, same mouth. saying I love you. Who tweeted Wednesday, she was my center, my rock, and my soulmate. Hi guys, welcome back to Crime Co, your go-to channel for some intriguing and incredible true crime stories. Before we continue with today's case, make sure to subscribe to our channel, hit the like button, and turn on the notifications. So buckle up and get ready to go on a wild ride with us. Jonathan Broyhill was 31 years old at the time of the events and had a well-paying job as a political strategist in Raleigh, North Carolina. On April 22nd, 2013, out of the blue, Broyhill attacked his friends, Jamie Hahn, then 29, and her husband, Nation, then 27, in their home at 1705 Tealwood Place, stabbing them multiple times with a kitchen knife. The attack was a complete shock to everyone close to the couple and Broyhill, since they had known each other for a very long time and were practically family by that point in time. Nation Han met Jamie Kirk while working on the presidential campaign of former North Carolina Senator John Edwards in 2008. A year later, on April 18, 2009, the couple got married and Broyhill was the best man at their wedding. Nation and Broyhill were longtime friends since they grew up together, and they managed to remain friends throughout the years. They were so close that Broyhill, besides working side by side with Jamie on her political fundraising firm, Sky Blue Strategies, also managed the finances of Brad Miller's campaign. Miller, the former U.S. representative for North Carolina's 13th Congressional District, hired Jamie's firm for his congressional campaign in 2010. The night of the events, Broyhill was at the couple's house for dinner, as they used to, and all indicated that it would be just another regular night between friends. But at one point, Jamie and Broyhill began to discuss some issues about his job. Jamie had noticed that there was a large sum of money missing from former U.S. Congressman Brad Miller's campaign account, and since Broyhill was the accountant responsible for all those expenses, everything led to the conclusion that he was being shady about the numbers. What happened next isn't very clear, but we could assume that Broyhill, being cornered with that information and knowing that he just got caught with a serious crime, decided to take the easy way and end Jamie's life. But she fought back, screamed for help, and her husband, who was in another room upstairs, ran to her only to find his former best man standing by his wife with a knife in hand. When the realization hit Nation that his best friend had stabbed Jamie several times, a fight broke out. While both men were fighting, Jamie was able to make it outside, but collapsed in the front yard of one of her neighbors, who were beyond shocked at the scene they were witnessing and immediately called 911. We can hear the desperation of the neighbors in the recorded 911 call and how heartbreaking it was to know that while life was slipping through her fingers, Jamie's only thoughts went to her husband and how much she loved him. Absolutely gut-wrenching. The police and paramedics showed up quickly to the scene and Jamie was immediately taken to the nearest hospital. Sadly, she died two days later, on April 24, 2013. She was stabbed four times in her back, chest, abdomen, and cheek. There were also at least 20 other cuts to her body that the state medical examiner classified as incised wounds. 
Her husband, Nation, also suffered stab wounds from Broyhill in his left hand, leaving his fingers badly sliced, but he was able to recover. What happened to Broyhill that made him attack with such brutality his supposed best friends? They once shared a weekly dinner together. Then, all of a sudden, he showed up at their house and did that? There was clearly something wrong with him. Broyhill was also stabbed on the night of the events, but his wounds were determined to be self-inflicted. On April 30th, 2013, after his release from the hospital, he was arrested and formally charged with first-degree murder, attempted murder, and assault with a deadly weapon with intent to kill and inflict serious injury. However, during the trial, it became apparent that Broyhill was suffering from severe mental health issues at the time of the attack. His defense attorney stated that he will be competent to stand trial, but he may present a defense that Broyhill had a diminished mental capacity at the time of the crime and that he didn't actually go into their friend's house with the intention of killing them, but that he was actually intending to end his life there. Broyhill pleaded not guilty to his charges in the hopes that this defense would work. If not, Broyhill could face a maximum sentence of life in prison without the possibility of parole. Broyhill's family and friends testified that they had noticed changes in his behavior in the weeks leading up to the attack. He had become increasingly paranoid, delusional, and erratic. A psychotherapist who treated him back in 2012 testified that there were several indications that Broyhill struggled with low self-esteem and, consequently, with his sexual identity. He also went on to tell several lies to his closest friends and acquaintances. He even went so far as to ask his pastor at Poland Memorial Baptist Church for the congregation to pray for him because he had pancreatic cancer. Nation Han also stated that Broyhill told him about having cancer, multiple sclerosis, and gallstones. But these statements were quickly proven to be false as there were no indications of such diseases in his body at the time he was in the hospital recovering from his wounds. Throughout our thorough research on this case, we couldn't find any logical reason for Broyhill to act this way. He was best friends with the Hans. They worked together and shared lots of milestones in their lives together. It didn't make sense. But as we went deeper into every detail, it seemed that indeed money was at the root of it. Jamie was a great friend, but when she discovered certain irregularities in Miller's campaign funds that Broyhill was managing, everything changed. Around $60.000 was missing from the funds, and embezzling money is a serious federal crime, especially regarding politics, so Jamie had no choice but to call out his friend, and she paid the price for it. Unfortunately, the motive for Broyhill's attacks is not clear, as it was revealed during his trial that he had several other issues, and as amateur investigators, we can only make assumptions based on the information released to the public. What can be confirmed is that something snapped inside Broyhill on that fateful night, and an innocent woman lost her life. On March 15, 2015, Broyhill was found guilty of second-degree murder and attempted murder, and sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. He appealed in April 2017, but the Court of Appeals of North Carolina stated in July of that same year that the defendant received a fair trial, free from error, so his appeal was dismissed. The case sparked a discussion on the state of mental health care in both North Carolina and the entire country. Many people used the Broyhill case as a prime example of how the system fails people with mental health issues and how greater assistance is needed to prevent tragedies like this from happening. Thanks again for joining us in the story. Before you go, let us know what you think about this incredible case in the comments section. We'll see you again in the next one.